Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If I could have your attention. Um, I'm just going to kick off today. Um, my name is Julian Sedgwick. I'm, uh, I'm here on behalf of Maclow Properties. I run TGC Global, which is an international residential consultancy business, and I work very closely with the Savills team. Um, so thank you very much for having me. Um, today, I'm going to just run through a sort of update on One Wall Street, introduce you to the project, where we are, what we're doing, um, and then give you a quick overview of sort of the residential market and what's been happening over the last six months. It's a really exciting market in New York at the moment, um, and we've got some quite interesting stats to run through. But One Wall Street, commonly known as the Irving Trust Building or the Bank of New York, started its life in 1929 um, and was created right in the heart of the boom days when you had the Empire State Building. For a very brief moment, it was the tallest building in the world for about three days. And then along came the Empire State Building. So it, it was once the tallest building in the world. Um, it was designed by Ralph Walker um, and has now retaken its life. In 2015, Maclow Properties acquired the building and redeveloped it into what it is today, 566 luxury apartments. And we've got a whole collection. I just want to sort of show you a quick video to introduce the project to you, give you a bit of a feel of the area and what's going on in that location. So that's One Wall Street and our project. The team behind the building, um, we have Maclow Properties, one of New York's well-established um, developers known for its, some of its most iconic buildings is probably Fifth Avenue and 432, sorry, 400, 432 Park Avenue, um, right in the heart of uh, overlooking um, Center Park, Central Park, sorry. Um, known in New York as one of the top luxury residential developers. They have been around, and Harry Macklow has developed some of the key, key, key locations. Apple Store is probably one of the best and, and most common um, sites. Behind it, we have SLCE Architects, been in New York for over 75 years, and renowned architect. They have created most of New York's skyline and some of the most iconic projects across New York. Um, th I think to date, they've done over 3,500 projects worldwide, um, and a renowned architect, especially we're very lucky to have them on a residential building of this nature, because normally it's large commercial stadiums that they're known for. Um, interior architects, Midas and Deborah Par uh, Burke and partners. Uh, Midas is known for their luxury space, openness, and, and, and re regeneration. For this project, it was very important. We brought in um, the key team that understood how to restore an Art Deco building. It's not every day you get a building of this sort of nature that needs to be recreated but ensuring that we encompass all of that Art Deco history and, and, and what goes with it. So as I mentioned, the building was built in 1929. Um, it was once, for a very few days, one of the tallest buildings in the world, um, then taken over by the Empire State. 
Um, it was all about grandeur. This building was the Irving Trust. It was a place for people to come. The banking hall that was, is still there today, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, was not just a banking hall. It was a place to welcome people. It was renowned as the Red Room, and the reason it was that was to bring people in, make it feel like a living room, make it feel like you're at home, and, and give you that luxury where you wanted to bank and you wanted to be, be at peace with, with where your money's going. Um, the building itself has been redesigned. We've basically kept the Art Deco features, um, and it really is a skyscraper. It's very rare in New York today to get an Art Deco building as a new build. Um, so if you look at the building itself, it's all Art Deco. Internally, it is a brand new building. Every bit of it from top to bottom. The Art Deco feature has been restored, but the apartments, etc., have been fully redone um, and, and designed in a way to fit modern life um, and modern living. We're very fortunate that most of our, all of our commercial space has been taken up. We have Whole Foods um, right at the center of the building, and we also have Lifestyle Gym, which I'll talk about a bit more in a bit more detail. But the sense of arrival, it was very important for Harry Macklow when they took over this building that we retain that commercial, that, that the Art Deco features. So as you walk through the main lobbies, it is like walking back through the 1930s. It has that grandeur, it has that welcomeness, that warmth. Um, and that wow factor. The chandeliers are still there in place, and it's a really exciting building to walk into. But we've brought it to the modern day. You sit on the 38th and the 39th floor with modern uh, residential facilities, a 75 meter pool that looks out onto the Statue of Liberty, surrounded by sea. This building is right in the heart of Manhattan with everything on your doorstep. And I mean literally everything on your doorstep. Sorry, there's someone just at the door. <laughs> um, but and it's not every day when you walk into this, walk out of this building, you've got some of the most amazing architecture, some of the most amazing art museums, history, some of the best shops on your doorstep. Everything is there. And that's what's so great about One Wall Street. Our residences um, from, you know, when, when the architects looked at how to design the apartments, we wanted to open them up. We wanted to have high ceilings. You've got 3.2 meter ceilings in, in this building. And this has been no mean feat to get that height. Um, it's taken us about four or five years to really re-engineer, re-engineer and work the space in the building. But because we wanted 3.2 meters, we lost a few floors to make sure that every residence had the height. Floor to ceiling windows, so the views out to Statue of Liberty, you've got water views, amazing terraces and balconies where we can add them. Um, melee appliances all the way through, um, and including our flooring. So in the studios to your sort of smaller two beds, we have um, French engineered oak flooring. And then in the, two, the larger two beds up, three and four beds, it's all herringbow flooring. So it is all great features. It is very modern. All apartments have islands in them to give you that space, of, that area to eat and, 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 and entertain your family. The One Club. I mentioned the One Club just now to you. Um, this is a phenomenal facility. We have uh, three floors in the building. The top two are the 38th and 39th floor. We've got over there, that's our 75 meter indoor pool and you are literally surrounded by glass and amazing views of New York, um, looking straight out to the Statue of Liberty. We have a phenomenal in-house gym with all state-of-art latest facilities, from your Pilates machines that can stretch you and move you in every direction, to the running machines that remember who you are, um, to our terraces, and then we also have private dining on, on the floors. We have co-working, we have kids' room, we have a dog spa. The list goes on. Um, we have in-house dining, private dining rooms for residents, whatever you expect, and 24-hour concierge. So if you're here in Singapore and you're flying into New York, you can phone up your concierge and say, I want my apartment heating put on, I want um, food put in the fridge, and that service is all available. It is paid for, but it is there for you as a, re as a resident of the building. So it's a really important thing to remember. And these, here's some of the big terraces. We've got fire pits here. There's barbecue areas. You can book it all out through. There will be a residence app, and you can book all these different spaces out with the, with the concierge. As I mentioned before, we've got a, a lot of commercial space within it. Very lucky to have Whole Foods Market in the building. They've got about 44,000 square foot of space uh, with us. Um, and it's phenomenal. So it's, it's a great supermarket. Everything's fresh. Everything's organic. And it's, it's a great, you can get your food, your dinner, your lunch, everything prepared for you, or you can buy fresh produce from them. Lifetime gym, over four floors, I remember, 75,000 square foot of space. Um, tra training from pil private Pilates, spa, it's got every bit of facility that you, you want in, in a building, and that's right on your doorstep, on top of the gym that you have in the One Club as well. So there's everything available to you. 
My favorite part of the building, as I mentioned to you, the Red Room. And I, uh, every time I talk about One Wall Street, this is where I go back to. This space, this is the main banking hall that was designed by Robert Walter in the day. And it was, it was designed in a way to be different from a normal banking hall where it was cold and not warm. He wanted somewhere where people could walk in and feel the luxury. So what Maclow Properties and, and the architects have done is create this into a luxury um, retail space. And this is going to have some of the best retail in New York in, 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 with it, in it. And the conversations that are going on, we hear that potentially it could be Hermes going in there. There could be a Louis Vuitton uh, in talks as well at the moment going in this space. And it is, has been fully restored. So it's a really special, really special place. If you go into Mayfair in London and you walk through the, the sort of little boutique arcades, this is what you're going to get, but on a bigger, grander scale. Just to give you a bit of orientation of the building, and you can see it from our model here as well. So we have Wall Street to the front here, and then you have Broadway, Exchange Place to the rear, and then New Street. Um, it is, and, and please, after this talk, do have a look around the model, talk to your agents about the orientation, which side of the building you want to be, where the views are, and where you want to, to be within the building. The neighborhood. I've mentioned it several times to you already, but this project has literally everything on your doorstep. Step outside, you've got some of the best parks, water uh, piers, some of the best restaurants and bars, all within the local facilities, some of the best shopping. A um, few highlights for you. Um, downtown, two mission star restaurants, 65, 60, 60, sorry, 6.4 billion has been invested in the downtown transit and upgrading of the transit around the area. 30 billion has been invested in downtown real estate and infrastructure to bring everything up to modern standard. Um, there's 172 acre uh, Governor's Island, only five minutes away by ferry, 20 playgrounds, four major food halls, seven farmers markets. Downtown has tripled its residents since, two, since 2000. 84 acres of park and esplanades on your doorstep, access to over 30 miles of east and west side cycling paths. These new paths have been put in so you can get up and down uh, New York very easily. There's also over 13 subway lines and 20 ferry routes, and all important, the heliport to get out to the Hamptons for the weekend. So just a few key landmarks to highlight. Um, you've got Trinity Church right on our doorstep there, um, just to the side of our building here, one of the oldest uh, churches in, in Manhattan. Um, you've got some of the best shopping from Brookfield Place, which is one of the large uh, retail malls. Westfield World Trade Center is there. Hermes is literally moments away, Tiffany & Co. Um, the great outdoors, the list goes on, but there's 13 parks within walking distance of One Wall Street. Um, and the cafes and the restaurants, everything is there. And there's some of the best um, restaurants are literally on your doorstep. The District, uh, Reserve Cut, and Crown Shy are some probably few to name, but really good. Location and, and key landmarks, I guess, to, that we've sort of mentioned, but I think some of the, the historical ones that really need to be highlighted. Federal Reserve is literally um, just behind us here, uh, number three. Trinity Church, as I mentioned, it's a stunning, stunning church to the side of the building. Um, and if you are on that side of the building and you look across to that architecture, it really is quite breathtaking. Battery Park, um, you can be minutes down to uh, piers 16 and 17, and I'll talk about that a bit later on, um, but some of the best restaurants and bars right on the water there. Um, and then Pier A, Harbour House, an amazing restaurant there as well. And then you look straight out to um, Statue of Liberty as well. Great outdoors. Every park on your doorstep, we've got the uh, big cycle pass down here. Um, the, probably the biggest one is Battery Park right at the bottom here, which is just a, a short walk down from the development. Um, and then the Liberty Park and the City Hall Park. And there's quite a few other small little playgrounds and everything literally within walking distance. As I mentioned, you've got 13 subway lines, 30 bus routes, six ferry lines, 20 ferry routes, and 28 city bike stations. So the city bike where you can just plug it uh, with your phone, Rent a bike and off you go. Um, it's literally, there is one literally about a minute from outside the development itself. So that's one Wall Street. Um, what's going on in the residential market? Um, I guess for me, I've, I've covered on a few bits of the area, but the area has become um, very well known to the local New Yorkers as what they call Fiddy. Um, the area is almost um, single handedly created its city's image of the busting center of the business and commerce. Every, every major financial business is within walking distance to One Wall Street. As you walk down Wall Street, a lot of the old banks are still there. Um, and that's why this is becoming more and more popular. 
what we found during the pandemic um, and probably two years ago, if we step back two years ago and look at, uh, look at the residential market in New York, um, pandemic hit, the residential market ceased, everyone stopped, and everyone that was sitting renting in New York actually left and left New York. They stepped out of the market. Um, and all the developers are sitting there scratching their heads going, what's going to happen? What's happening? Everyone wants to get out. Everyone's working from home. What we've seen is as the world has reopened and, and as things have sort of taken place again, the big banks, uh, JP Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, all of them have told their staff they need to come back to work and they need to be back in, in the heart of New York. They can't be working from home all the time. And we've seen everyone sort of coming back in and the residential market has reopened. In the last 18 months, the market has just increased and growing rapidly as we see that, that, that go. And I'll take you through some of the stats in just a minute. But where we are, you're living right by the water. Pier 15 is right on your doorstep. And, and in the uh, sort of the Sunday or Friday evening, sorry, um, on a Friday evening, you step down, you go down to Pier 15, you have a, a drink and there's live music. There's a lot going on down there. We then are surrounded by some of the most stunning architecture in the world, uh, all within walking distance. And the New York um, government has created this whole new art sculpture that's going on, the balloons, everything within these public realms. So as you step out and you walk down the street off um, from One Wall Street, you'll see a few of these sort of balloon-shaped architects. There'll be different bits of art all around uh, the neighborhood. Um, and it just brings the, the place alive. There are buildings by the dozen here, and some are probably the best ones to mention is the Woolworth Center, you've got One Wall, um, One Wall Street, you've got the walking distance down to what was the World Trade Center, it's now One World Trade, um, and the Memorial Parks. You've got the heart of the financial district, um, and you've also got the Woolworth Building, which is a stunning, stunning uh, building. But everywhere you go, there's a new bit of Art Deco history mixed with modern architecture. And there's not many cities where a lot of the old is being restored and, 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 and where we sit creates that sort of new go-to location. Fine dining, as I mentioned to you, is in abundance. And one of my favorite, DeMarco's, is literally around the corner. Some of the best steak you'll ever have uh, in the heart of New York. Um, but you're, you're, you've, the list goes on of what you can go out and eat. You've got Nobu, where, where it all began. Harry's Bar, classic uh, Italian specialities. You've got uh, El Lucio, Torica, SoCal Mexican, everything. And there's some amazing food uh, truck parks, literally within most of the common parks at the weekend. So you've got a world of uh, gourmet restaurants from fine dining down to um, street food, all within walking distance. As I mentioned to you earlier, shopping is on your doorstep. Some of the biggest malls, some of the best shops. Step over, head over to Hermes on Broad Street. Um, you've got some of the biggest retail malls. If you're in the mood for a full day of shopping, Brookfield Place is the place to go. And you will basically walk in there and you'll probably get lost and spend most of the day in there and probably hurt the credit card quite a bit as you go around. A rich area of history. And that's what I think is the most important thing to think about when considering One Wall Street. In New York, there's a lot of these new builds, a lot of these big glass buildings that you can buy into. There aren't that many Art Deco buildings that have been restored and, and created into a new build. Um, and you've also got to consider the market at the moment in particular, and we will just talk about that very shortly. But I think when you look at the New York residential market at the moment, it is very hot. There's a lot of competition. So if you're going to buy a resale property, you're going to go in and the price may be $2 million for that, that property on day one. And we'll probably be in a room like this with probably the same number of buyers and expect to probably pay 25 to 30% above the list price. And then you'll probably get gazumped when you get it secured because it's that hot. There's so many, there's not enough supply in the market and buyers are fighting for property. So it's when you've got a project like One Wall Street where it is a period building, but it's a new build, it creates that, that ambiance to, to, to secure the, the home that you really want. Um, so New York's prime market is recovering fast. Um, New York housing market looks that it definitely got the memo post COVID and it's performing the right way. Sales are strengthening, prime tenants are eyeing up the city, center stock, and both inventory levels day on day keep increasing. We're seeing an 18% growth over 2022, which, you know, in November when I stood here and talked about New York, I said we were looking at about a 15, to, between a 14 and 15% growth. It's still growing and it's gonna grow. The world has reopened and so has New York market with 35% increase in international buyers in the market in Q1 in 2022. We're seeing a lot of international buyers back in the market here and, and, and they're buying and it's, it's very exciting to see. The rental market, as I mentioned to you earlier, a lot of the renters moved out. 
and now as companies are requiring employees to be back in work, that this has created the rental market, it's red hot. There's nothing like it. They haven't seen it like this for over 20 years. And people are, are again, outbidding people. In representing landlord owners, they get over 10 viewings per day and multiple offers all above the asking price. So the sales market's hot, the residential market is also. There's not enough residential stock in the market to supply the, the volume, uh, the number of renters in the market there. So key finding, you know, I think the key things to take out of this and, and some of the key bits that we took from the um, Knight Frank Wealth Report was drilling down into the Wealth Report's attitude survey at country level. Reported, the report confirmed that UA, US ultra high net worth individuals uh, to find the, find the following points. 33% of US high net worth planned to buy a home, and they did in 2021. This is continuing to grow. And when I, I have the, the new report just got published, this number has already gone up to, I believe, about 42 to 43%. Um, US high net worth are motivated by tax reasons to move their wealth globally, but more international buyers are coming into the market as well. And we're seeing a lot more um, overseas buyers coming into the New York buy market because they see the growth. Prediction of growth over the next five years is definitely there, and the volume, the, the amount of stock versus supply isn't. So it keeps the market strong. So why invest in one Wall Street? Um, I think a few of these key facts, you know, we look at 6.4 billion in transit investments in downtown, over 800 technology, media, and advertising and um, IT companies. Have, tr have really turned to downtown as their, their sort of global headquarters. And we've seen the whole of the downtown since 2000 has become this big residential market. They really have gone into sort of taking a very sleepy part of New York, which was very much commercial, not, very, not many residential projects down there, to this place of putting a lot of restaurants, a lot more into residential planning, and it's re rewoken uh, Wall Street and, and Manhattan itself. Not many places where you get neoclassical architecture with over 100,000 square feet of private, modern, five-star amenities. And that's what's so special. So if we look at the 10-year median sales versus numbers, and especially the number of sales, if we look here and you can sort of see 2019, we had you know median house price was right up. And then along came COVID. And the market was really rallying from 2015 to 2019. The market went from bottom here all the way up and really was doing amazingly. Pandemic hit, the world went to sleep, we all got locked in our houses and we couldn't go out. Residential market stopped and came right down through 2022, through 20. Then we saw an uptick again, and we've seen this uptick continue sort of through the different lockdowns and different bits of the pandemic over 21. And then from sort of mid to late 2021, we've seen it really regain and rallying. And it's, when we look at sort of the median house price, we're sitting at around the 4,200 mark here, and we predict over the next five years, the continuation should be above up here. So our house prices are now way above the 1.80, 1. Well, over a million, over the 1.18 mark. For the past three consecutive quarters, Manhattan sales have been on record setting uh, tier. And th this, this data has been collected probably over 33 years. And this is the, mo the total, this is the, sorry, the total was the most recorded in the first quarter over of sales over 33 years of tracking, and the numbers are increasing. So the average house price, uh, in, if we look at Manhattan as a whole, is sitting at just over two million. P price per square foot is over six, uh, 1,600 a foot, and the median is sitting about 1.1 million. New developments are sitting at about 2.3, resales just shy of a million. And when I talked about this back in November, we were down by, we, Resale was sitting about 850, and new development was just shy of 2.3 2 million. Oh, it was just shy of 2 million. So it is growing, it is rapidly seeing. And if we look at some of the key highlights so far, 107% price, sorry, that should be 10.7% price growth at medium prices. Uh, we're 45.9% up on closed sales of stock coming on the market, it's selling. Oh, nearly 50% is selling. And inventory total is down. There isn't enough stock in the market. So we're minus 4.4% of total inventory in the market. Now, in November, number of days on market, and this is really important when you look at New York residential market or the US, we always talk about how many days property sits on the market. In November, our average for a, uh, a property coming on the market was sitting at about nine days. We're sitting at less than minus one day on the market. So when a new property is coming on the market, it's being sold, even before it hits 
the register, it's actually the agents have sold it or they've got a bidding war on it. So this shows how, how positive the market's going. So percent, uh, percentage of market sold above list price. So as we can see here, if we look at percentage above list price, really was sort of rallying very high at 2015. It sort of came down. We're now pushing back up. 2021 has increased, and we're still growing um, a number of properties. Still got a way to go, but it's still increasing and growing. And then Manhattan's months of supply. And I think this is quite an interesting one, because if you look at our average prices of where we sit versus your sort of co-op buildings, your co-op buildings are your old um, sort of residential buildings where you have to, to buy, you have to put an interview forward and, and be selected by the co-op board and be approved. If you're not approved, you can't buy the apartment. Condos, anyone can buy. There's no co-op board, there's no restrictions. Um, and, and, and it seems to be the most popular. And that's partly why the co-ops sit in these higher, because they're, they're the they are the sort of properties that sit on Park Lane and the old historical properties that you see in New York. But what we can see, month supply here, the, between sort of 1.5 million and up to the 5 million mark, it's steady growth. And even the 10 million, per, this is sort of really grown. This has doubled in six months of the number of condos and selling over 10 million now of monthly supply of stock. Resales, the first quarter sales in 19 years of tracking. Medium prices increased year over year for the fifth consecutive quarter and the highest share of sales above 5 million since 2003. So this is the resale market. And again, as I mentioned to you, in the resale market, as soon as the property is coming on the market, you've probably got five to 10 buyers bidding for that apartment or that, that, that unit, especially in prime uh, New York at the moment. The average price is sitting at just shy of 2 million at 1.8 million. Um, and the number of days on market is just uh, over, I think it's just below 1% now. Yeah. Our condo market, so this is where we are within the new, we're sort of sit between the condo and the new build. Um, but our average, our studios are sitting, you see 7.6%, one, one bed, 34% uh, of sales share, and they're continuing to grow. So the condo market has, has grown. Again, from 2019, it was up, took a nose dive, and then sort of we saw an escalation again, and it's still continuing number of sales, we're sitting close to where we were back in 2017, um, just shy of uh, 1900 at the moment. Luxury market within uh, the residential market. So if we look at luxury, it's that's high end um, product. Um, of that breakdown, the new development makes up 34.2%. Median house price in new development is sitting at 6.8 million. Um, if we look at the condos, the average price, which is 46% of the market, is sitting at 10.5. And the resale market is 65% of that. It's at just over 6 million um, as your medium price. And sales really are growing. And the number of sales is, is rallying. So we, we're just shy of about 420, I think. from New development. So all new developments within the Manhattan area in Q1 uh, of 2022. We've seen the average, house, uh, average price sit at 3.3 million. We've seen the average price per square foot increase to 2,295. And we've seen um, the majority of the sales sitting between one and three million at 47.9. Overall price trend indicators continue to remain well below pre-pandemic levels, which is a, a really good thing, especially for the new build, new build sector. Sales were nearly double year, uh, a year ago's levels. So what's selling at the moment in the market is double what we were doing 12 months ago, and that will continue. I was speaking to Douglas Elliman the other day about sort of working with a client. We're looking for about two or three luxury apartments in New York. And the one thing he said is, he said, look, as soon as property comes on, it is selling. But what we're seeing is people are buying these properties and they're looking to hold them for the next five years because they see the growth, in, especially in the new development and the condo market in these new areas and, and these areas where you've got a unique building and they're seeing the growth go up by 10% per annum over the next five years. Oh, sorry. That was sort of a, a quick snapshot of the market, what's going on. I'll open the floor to any questions, or if you have any questions or you want to talk to your agents, please. But if there are any questions, do, do ask away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Julia. No, oh, sorry, it's Robert's, Robert's there, sorry.